Well, here we are again, folks. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. As we were in church the other night, and uh, our preacher got up to preach, he said that uh, he had been working on that one-hour message that he had for 21 hours. And sometimes it takes 21 hours to get a hour's message up. I'm going to read Psalm 23. It has six verses in it. I have studied many, many, many hours these six verses many times. And they are different and they, they are to be studied. And so here we are, the Lord. When we say the Lord, who is that? That's the God who spoke this world into existence, who flung the stars out in the sky and said, stay there until I'm uh, done using you for this particular purpose, who hung different worlds in different places, who put the eons and eons and eons out there. The uh, world of people of today cannot explore but only a certain distance. And they say that it's probably that much more or more out there. You cannot explore God. He is an everlasting God. He is an ever all being God. And you can't. You cannot explore Him. You can accept Him as He says He is. He is Jehovah God. He is the Almighty God. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the, a God that gives what any person needs. He is the Almighty God. And He is, he is my shepherd. What about that? Here I am, a little peon man, and God is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd, I can say these next words. I shall not want. You know why I don't have to want? Because he's met every single need that I need without me even asking. Without me looking for it. Without me going out and saying, well, I want this and I want that. No, I want what God wants for me. Let's look at some examples here. Uh, even though this is a beautiful psalm, and, and this psalm appealed to David, and to all believers as well, a more, the, and, and it applied to Christ. It applied to Christ. That Christ would not need anything, that he has everything that he needs. Uh, a man by the name of William says this, uh, only one voice sang his psalm in perfect tune. Only one voice sang his psalm in perfect tune. And that voice was the very voice of the Lord God himself who came through his son, Jesus Christ. And all believers uh, can sing through Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. Jesus came as God in the flesh, the Christ. So William says only one voice sang this psalm in perfect tune. It was the voice of Jesus that sang it. When walking through the dark valley of his earthly life, Jehovah was his shepherd. His father, Jehovah, God, was his shepherd. He had no other shepherd to a shepherd over him except his father Jehovah. It was his father Jehovah that put his egg, if you please, in Mary. You know the man carries the seed. But if you'll discover and work on that a little bit and see that the seed of man was passed down through women from 
the Garden of Eden all the way to the day that Mary received that seed. That is a deep, deep, deep subject. Would be denied by many of our physicists today or our people today who dabble in that type of thing. They say this is not possible. No, it's not, except God did it. And anything is possible in God. Anything. God can do anything He wants. He's the one that created the egg, He's the one that created the seed, He's the one that created the fertilization system. And he's the one that made it so intricate that out of one man, two people could come. Out of Adam, that Eve could come and be here. Let's get back in this verse. Only one voice sang in a psalm, perfect tune. It was the voice of Jesus when walking through the dark valley of his earthly life. Jehovah was his shepherd. There is no suggestion of sin in the psalm. Its great theme is not so much Jehovah gives or Jehovah does or as or who he is. And yet at the same time, as Christ presents himself as the sheep, he is also presented as the shepherd, the great shepherd of his people. For he was raised from the dead in order to be such. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Let's go over there in the New Testament. And I've got a big Bible open here, so I'm going to have to flip a little bit. And Hebrews 13, let's get over there. By the way, do you know how many chapters there is in Hebrews? There are 13. This is a practice that you could do. When I'm studying and I'm going to a book, and I like to see how many chapters there is in that book, and I try to put that in my mind. There are 13 chapters in Hebrews. And so, therefore, and what are we looking at? We're going to look at Hebrews uh, chapter 13 and verse 20. And what it says, now the God of peace, wow, that's Elohim, <laughs> the, the God of all, the all God, the almighty, the all purpose, the all God, the all seeing God, proclaimed that peace has been made between God and fallen man, and done so through what Jesus did on the cross on man's behalf. Man, Jesus did that on our behalf that you and I could say, I am a son of God, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul, and he will. And we have him from evermore. That brought, he was brought again from the dead, the Lord Jesus was. This presents the only uh, mention of resurrection of Christ in the epistle of Hebrews. That great shepherd of the sheep. This presents one who died for us and whom raised from the dead. That great shepherd. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. His blood was the everlasting covenant. Points to the cross and proclaims the fact that his covenant began being perfect, being perfect and eternal. His covenant was perfect and eternal. Do you remember when Jesus left the cross that he rent the veil in, in the uh, tabernacle? The veil was sent from, rent from top to bottom. How did it rent from top to bottom? Jesus shot down through it and rent it from top to bottom. He went down and he preached in paradise. He preached first in hell, which is a permanent place. And as he preached in hell, then he uh, came back over there into paradise and he preached to them. And he took those from paradise 
those saints that were in paradise, and he brought them back and he stopped on the earth. He picked his blood up from under the cross. This is in a three-day period now that he's alive, yet he's in the grave, but he's alive. Everybody thinks he's in the grave, but he's not in the grave. That body might be there, but it ain't there because he's gone. And they don't know whether the body's gone or not. And the reason they don't know whether the body's gone or not is they hadn't looked. Until they look and find out he's gone, then they find no, he went. So he went in his body down there, and he came back in his body. He scooped the blood out from under the cross. He went up, and he uh, put it before the throne of his father in heaven, <coughs> which was what he had to do. And as he put it there, it covered the sin of all of the Old Testament people that were in paradise. And now they could come in. So he, then he comes back and he gets them and takes them with him. And now they are. They are there. Who are there? The 24 elders. The 24 elders. And, and eventually the apostles will be there. And so all of those that were before, that were there, they're there now, the, the, the fathers of the uh, law. You say Moses, yes. You say Elijah, yes. Jeremiah, yes. Ezekiel, yes. Joel, yes. Job, yes. Keep going. You can go name after name after name after name after name. And say yes, 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 yes. Obadiah. Yes, uh, and, and you could just keep naming. And he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Wow, what a picture. Lying down in a green pasture. Hey, I'm on this earth, living in a house that God has made a green pasture for me. What is my grass? My grass is books books. <clears throat> All of my books. This particular book happens to be the introduction of the women that Jesus used in the Bible. That happens to be Abigail. And then we can go on. That's the A. And then there's Esther. That's the E. And it's all about Esther and how God used her and, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hey, these women are already uh, placed to be in heaven. And there's Mary of Bethany, another Mary. And then there was Martha, that was the sister of Mary. And then there was a Samaritan woman, one of my favorite people in the whole Bible, was a Samaritan woman that had had five husbands. And Jesus said to her, She, he perceived that she knew him. She said, how could you know these if you're not the one that is coming? She knew more than the Jews did. Because being a Samaritan, she was half Jew. Evidently, that first man that she had married was a Jewish man, maybe a rabbi, somebody that really knew the book and knew about Jesus and had told her. And she had that in her heart and in her mind. Even though she had been through five husbands, and what did Jesus say? I forgive you. I don't. I don't hold that against your tongue. What did he say? He said, "Flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. What the flesh has done can be wiped away, but the spirit of God will come and everlastingly be with you." And this Samaritan woman is in heaven. Uh, whether she's in heaven today, right this minute or not, I cannot say, and neither can you. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you're present with the Lord, if you're absent from the body and you're present with the Lord, undoubtedly you're standing before Him, and you are in His presence in some form or some manner until the great reunion will take place at the end. This is another book of women, and this was Miriam and Deborah.
and several other women of the Old Testament. And then I have books of the men of the Bible. <clears throat> and then I have books on this and books on that and books on this. I have maybe, I probably could, I could probably scrape up a thousand real easy in this house uh, with my big library upstairs that I have that has hundreds in it and uh, uh, everywhere in the house. What are these books? These books are all books on the Bible. And they do not even scratch the surface. They do not even. I've got some books with very, very, very small writing, and they weigh four pounds. <laughs> so they've got more writing in them than the Bible has. And so he leads me well beside the still waters. This 23rd Psalms makes it abundantly clear that the church is not the Savior. Neither is religion or heresy the Savior. Neither are rules and regulations the Savior. Only the Lord Himself is the Savior. You could be in a church that follows rules and regulations you can put your money in front of the saints and drop it in the buckets and still die and go to hell. Jesus Christ is the only way. Works will not get you there. You can only go through the Savior, Jesus Christ. And this sign puts it that way. That he's the only one that can do it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Do you know what that's saying? That's saying that the powers of the darkness of this world is where the shadow of death, there will be no shadow in heaven. The Bible said there is no shadow in heaven. No shadow, none. Do you mean that, that anybody can walk all the way around you and there will be no shadow? No, there won't. Because there's no sun. God himself is the light. Jesus himself is the light in heaven. And there's no shadow in them. There's no darkness in them. They're pure. God and Jesus himself are totally 100% pure. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. There's no shadow. You see a shadow by my window right there. Up over me here where the light has made a shadow. But that won't be in heaven. The light will be all the way around you. You'll be wrapped up in light. Adam and Eve were wrapped in light. What happened when they sinned? The light fled away. The light fled away. And they saw they were naked. Before they, the light was on them, they didn't have, they couldn't see themselves as naked. And so that's the way that was. So the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. By the way, has a, you ever seen the shadow of a gun shoot anybody? You ever seen the shadow of an arrow kill anybody? You ever seen the shadow of a bullet kill somebody? No. The shadow is just a shadow. It's a, it's, it's a thing, uh, it's the past of the present. And when we get to heaven, there'll be no past. It's all going to be there and all the past has gone away, disappeared. And all things that are of the past, which is the world. Earthly is earthly. The earth was made for what it's being used for right now and it's an earthly thing and it's going to be done away with. One day, God is going to, when he takes us to heaven, we'll have no more use for the earth except to come back to the earth as helpers or as some way. We're going to be, the Bible says, as the angels in the sense that we'll not have a gender. We won't be male or female. We'll be up there and we won't be male or female. And we'll, we'll have no gender. And, and that's the way as the angels will be. And we'll be used by God as the angels are used today. You say, well, how do you know the angels are used today? Well, we have four or five accounts in the Bible or many accounts in the Bible. Some, some I won't say the number, but I, I, I did know it at one time. 
and some number of angels that came down at different times. God had God, Jesus came as an angel to Jacob, and uh, the two angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels throughout the Old Testament. And the angels, some of the angels came in the New Testament and ministered unto Jesus. And so we know that the angels came, and the angel came and opened the tomb. We know that some angels have done some things. And God has the power and the ability to send us from heaven to the earth. Well, when he makes the new heaven and the new earth, we, of course, will be in the new heaven. And I don't know who's going to be on the new earth, but whoever it is going to be on the new earth will be part of that forever. That's going to be a forever thing. God designed the earth for mankind, and he's going to give mankind that again he made in the mankind and in the heart of mankind <clears throat> the desire for this earth yea though I walk through the valley of shadow of death I will fear no evil that's the powers of darkness as I said in that shadow for you are with me and your rod and your staff they comfort me the Lord is with me in me and his rod and his staff comfort me what is his rod and staff? This is his rod and staff. This book right here is the rod and staff of God. If you want to walk with God and you don't want to fall down in a crack or in a valley or in a place, you take this rod and this staff and you put it in your heart and in your mind and in your life and you use it. And you will not fail. You will not fail. I can promise you today, you will not fail. The ideal position of the lamb is to allow the shepherd to fight for him. In fact, the only fight we are told to fight is the good fight of faith in 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Let's see if we can get over in the New Testament to 1 Timothy right quick. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. There's 4 and 5 and 6 and 12. And 10, 11, 12. Alright. Fight the good fight. Timothy says, fight the good fight of faith. In essence, now what he's saying here is we're only to fight the fight of faith and to encourage, be encouraged upon that. Every attack of Satan is against the believer uh, irrespective of its form to destroy the seriousness of our faith. You know what? You know what he wants to do. The devil wants to push our faith out away from us and push it away from the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ that made us have faith. And so we need to uh, all the time uh, fight that good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. Timothy says, "Lay hold on eternal life." Well, unto ye are all called and had professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hey, this does not refer to the practical location uh, of, uh, of the eternal life, but it, the practical work of what we have to do on this world, in this world. Salvation is a practical thing. And it's the thing that guides us and leads us. I was led by alcohol for years. And the devil used alcohol to make me a preacher of alcohol, a preacher of the, of the, the devices that the world had. But now, I have the Lord. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Who are these enemies? And what is the table? Wow. You anoint my head with oil. Here's the table. Here's the table. Every word in here 
said by Jesus and by God and by his saints is the bread of life. This is where the bread of life is. You want to live a comfortable, a happy life through thick and through thin, through troubles, through things that bother you, through things that are after you. You've got to do it. Because this table is prepared for you even though there are enemies out there. And he does anoint our head with oil. This is the oil of the Holy Spirit. Where do you and I get that oil? We don't get it out of the bottle. We get it out of the book. The Holy Spirit of God is presented to us in his word. He left us his word. And he left us the spirit that he put in us that we could understand this word. A lost man could read all the way through the Bible and never understand one word. Not one. But a saved man can read this Bible and understand it in his heart and in his life and can use it to work with and eat off from this table and be anointed by this oil. And, it, and my cup runneth over. Hey, if you study this book, you will sometimes sit in front of it and tears will drop onto it from your eyes as you read and grasp the fact that God's talking to you. Each and every one of us can take this same book and glean from it and God will give it to us and we will have it. <coughs> yeah, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen to this. Goodness. Goodness. He gave us green pastures and still waters. Mercy. Retrieves us when we foolishly leave the path of righteousness. He said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As long as the Lord is our shepherd, we can expect all of things, the, this, all the days of our life we can have victory uh, this is September April May June July August September four months ago my wife went to heaven after 63 years I stood before this machine many and many a night while she laid in the bed in there with cancer and put excerpts on this machine. She's gone now. A great part of my life has ended. But the part that will never end is we will be forever together in heaven one day. And the part that will never end is God is still using me. God is still going to prepare that table before me. God is still going to give me the victory over death and hell and over the grave. And my wife already got the victory over death and hell and over the grave. She is now in heaven with God. <coughs> to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's for a Christian. That's for a Christian. And the spirit and the soul are the two things that be with God and are saved. Say, my wife and I were building a mansion in heaven. We've been building the mansion since 1972 in heaven. And Lord willing, I believe is she'd be there waiting. And when I get there, we'll be in that mansion that God allowed us to build there in heaven. Where is that mansion? It's in that great city called the New Jerusalem that is 1,500 miles square. And that's where it is. I ask this question all the time. If you are building a mansion there, have you sent a board up there today? Have you sent something up there to God today? Or not? You need to send, him, send things up there today to work with. Have you sent him a board to nail up today? Send him something today. Get out and go to work and do things. Get in your Bible. 
and and do what God would have you do. A lot of times come and gone. This is Brother Peter. And I have a word of prayer. Most precious Heavenly Father, I take I pray God you'll take this excerpt, put it in the hearts of those that see it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.